Can you do it all? Yes, I am so busy. Can you do it all well? Yeah, I mean, I won't lie, it's a lot. There's work, there's school, there's rehearsal, family, friend's birthday party this weekend, couldn't say no. And how's that going? I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> For more great book summary videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button. If you find this video helpful, click the like button and let us know what you think. Essentialism by Greg McEwen is a New York Times bestseller and has sold over 1 million copies. The CEO of LinkedIn, Jeff Weiner, says it makes a compelling case for achieving more by doing less. Ariana Huffington called it an essential read, and Steve Harvey said it changed his life. The premise of the book is summed up in this one quote, once you give yourself permission to stop trying to do it all, you can make your highest contribution towards the things that really matter. In this video, we'll cover three stages to living a life of essentialism. They are explore, eliminate, execute. Let's dive in. According to Greg McEwen, there are two types of people in this world, an essentialist who practices the less is more philosophy and a non-essentialist who practices the I can do it all philosophy. A non-essentialist says things like, I can do both, I have to do it. And they say yes to virtually everything. They often make little progress in multiple projects and they often feel overwhelmed, exhausted, and out of control. Does that sound like you? Conversely, the essentialist focuses in on only a few important things and is headed in one clear direction. They say things like, no. Oh, um, okay, maybe not always like that. Though later in this video, we'll cover a variety of ways of saying no, but essentialists know how to keep the main thing the main thing. Before saying yes, they always ask, what's the trade-off? Because they know that whatever you say yes to, you're saying no to something else. So where do you fall? No judgment here. But for now, let's dive into the three stages. And we'll use the analogy of a closet to explain them. Hello. Stage one is to explore. This means taking stock of where the closet of your life is right now. Because you don't just want to do and have a few things, you want to do and have the right things. I feel like Marie Kondo of The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up would also say that. <laughs> the book shares five tips of exploring, but in this video, we'll cover two. The first tip is to escape and take a break. Not essentialists are too busy to take a break. Essentialists know how important breaks are. Now, before you pack your bags and run to the mountains, though that does sound nice. Let's look at what that means in your life as it is today. There are two ways to escape. Create physical space. Move yourself from one location to another. With little time, take a short walk. With more time and money, take a vacation. Second, create mental space. Take a minute to be quiet wherever you are. Our video, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle has some wonderful suggestions on how to do this as well. But I know what you'll say. I'm too busy to take a break. Listen, the busier you are, the more escape you'll need. For example, Jeff Weiner, the CEO of LinkedIn that we talked about earlier, puts two hours of blank space on his calendar daily to simply think. Bill Gates takes one week twice a year to just think. Though I wish I could do that, I personally make sure to carve out an hour or two at the end of each day to unwind and watch some TV. I've noticed that if I don't do this, I'm significantly more exhausted the next day. And I'll need to take even more time to relax and make up for the lack of it. So take a break. Okay, not now, after the video. Which brings us to the second tip of exploration, sleep. Non-essentialists think of sleep as a burden. I, I relate to this sometimes. The mindset, I have to do it all, justifies them working long hours and not sleeping. Essentialists understand how vital sleep is. And that's not just because being rested feels nice, but they know it enables them to make better decisions. Think about it this way. As you explore the closet of your life, the version of you that's well rested will be able to think clearly about what's in front of you. Before you throw that sweater out, did grandma give it to you last Christmas or did you win it in a sale? The exhausted you won't be able to think clearly and will likely make a poor long-term decision. It was grandma's after all. Ugh. Yikes. <laughs> but what about that person you know that says, I'm productive because I sleep five hours a night? According to the author, people who don't sleep enough are so used to being tired that they don't even know what rest is. So as you ponder career, financial, or what should you do today choices, remember that sleep 
is your friend. It helps you explore your options of where your energy and time should be going. And ultimately, it helps you make better decisions. Sorry, Grandma. So if you're ever wondering why Google has nap pods in their offices, it's because they know. Sleep is serious business. So returning to the analogy of the closet, stage one was about exploration. Stage two is to eliminate. That means it's time to say goodbye to those pants that don't fit you anymore. I know, it's okay. Because here's the reality, you can't have it all. Essentialists know that life is about trade-offs. Ignoring the reality of trade-offs can create huge problems. Like when you commit to everything, but disappoint everyone. The book has five tips on how to eliminate, but here are two. The first tip is to clarify your purpose. Lewis Carroll once said, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So grab a pen and paper and ask yourself, what do you want the purpose of your life to be? Being clear about what you want will clarify what you need to eliminate. This applies to organizations as well. Vague mission statements make it difficult for management to make decisions when faced with a crisis. But when mission statements are clear, they help clarify how to act in times of trouble. An example from the book is when Johnson & Johnson faced a cyanide scandal in 1982. Seven people died after taking Tylenol, which they had a 37% ownership of. This was a huge problem because at the time, that was their most profitable product. This obviously created a crisis, but should they prioritize the customers, the shareholders, or consoling the families? The answer came from a statement written in 1943 by their then chairman, Robert Wood Johnson. It read that customers were first and shareholders second. So Johnson & Johnson recalled all the Tylenol all, causing them to lose an estimated $100 million. Now you might not be facing a $100 million problem, God I hope not, but you might have to choose between working on a Saturday or spending time with your family. If you are clear on your purpose, you'll know what to eliminate when faced with those choices. That brings us to our other tip of elimination, dare to say no. This is for my people pleasers out there. I see you, I'm with you. We're going through this together. So let's look at a few ways to do this. Think of no as your friend. As we talked about earlier, every yes is a no. When you say yes to a job opportunity, you say no to anything else you could have done in that time. So embrace no, because whether you mean to or not, you are with that friend all the time. Second, when you say no, you're rejecting the decision, not the person. Whoever is asking you to do something is like a merchant asking you to exchange goods for your time. Saying no is not you rejecting the merchant, but the goods. Third, saying no doesn't have to use the actual word no. The book shares 25 different ways of saying no, but here are four. By time. The next time someone asks you to do something, count to three before delivering your verdict. Or make it a practice to say, let me think about it and I'll get back to you. Second, ask the person giving you more to do to prioritize for you. For example, if you're dealing with a boss who keeps giving you more work, instead of saying yes, ask them which of the other projects they gave you, you should deprioritize. This makes them choose the no for you, or see how overworked you are. Third, offer something else. For example, maybe you can't drive your friend somewhere, but they can borrow the car. This gives you a way to show support while still saying no. Finally, use other language. You could say, I'm flattered you thought of me, but unfortunately I don't have the bandwidth. Or I would love to, but I'm overcommitted. I use that one a lot. That brings us to the final stage, execute. In the wardrobe of your life, this is where you create a system to maintain your closet. Cause you know how things get. You take a whole day to organize it, next thing you know, it's a mess. The book has six tips on executing, but here are two. First, create a routine. Non-essentialists hate routines and start their weeks and days figuring out from scratch what to do. Essentialists know that routines give them freedom by allowing them to make fewer choices in what to do next. Therefore, they accomplish more. Jack Dorsey, for example, is best known as the creator of Twitter and its former CEO. At Twitter, he divided his weeks into themes, with each day covering a different aspect of the company. This means that every day he didn't have to metaphorically take the clothes out of his closet and figure out where to put them. He knew exactly where his denims were. So here are some tips on how to create routines. One, 
have multiple ones. If you work on a variety of projects, try the Jack Dorsey method instead of trying to cram in everything every day. Two, examine your current routines and change them. Instead of building new routines from scratch, look at what you already do habitually. Then see if you can add to activities, therefore making change easier. Our other video Atomic Habits shares some actionable tips on how to create new habits. Third, do hard things first. If your hard thing needs to be done daily, like working out or a project, get that done first. For more tips on how to do this, check out our video on Eat That Frog, which <laughs> I also did. I really like routines, if you can't tell. The second tip is to always create buffers. Non-essentialists plan their time, assuming nothing will interrupt them. Essentialists are aware that their plans can change, and therefore always create a buffer. There are three types of buffers you can make. First, a time buffer. Don't schedule everything back to back. As a rule of thumb, always add 50% more time to doing anything, whether traveling, having a meeting, or finishing up a project. Second, have a physical buffer. Always over-prepare. For example, if you're going on a camping trip, carry more food than you need. A personal example is when, a few years ago, my friends and I did a four-day hike in the Adirondack Mountains. We packed so much food, I actually thought it was going to be excessive. However, we ended up eating almost all of it. Buffers also apply to finances, like saving for an emergency fund. Finally, a risk buffer. Think about the most important project you're working on right now, then consider the risks you face doing it. Ask yourself how you'd reduce those risks. This way you won't be blindsided by things that go wrong, as they often do. So that's it, the three stages of becoming an essentialist. Explore, eliminate, execute. Which one stood out the most to you? Let me know in the comments below and share this video with someone who you think might benefit from watching it. This book has lots of great insights into essentialism that we didn't have time to cover in this video. If you're interested in going deeper, check out the short form guide to essentialism. Short form makes the world's best guides to nonfiction books, complete with well-crafted short exercises to help you learn faster and remember more. You can get a five day free trial and a discounted annual subscription if you go to shortform.com YouTube. Click the link in the description below and support the author and publisher by buying Essentialism. A link to buy the book is below as well. And finally, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss the next short form video. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.